he's been, and he's been like really great to oh, work with. Uh, are we doing, doing this uh, this match? Yeah, might as well, right? Yep. I was, dude. I was that. I remember that day. I flew from Montreal to Chicago. Shout out to my sponsor, Roll Forever. She helped me out. She like, I had such a fucking crazy schedule, and um, oh, we look like two. Look two at that, hunt, man. Damn. Look at that. Um, pause on that with the people. Yeah, look at leave that it right there. Seconds. So just a little background <laughs> of that competition. Uh, so I flew in. Yeah, day of, man, like a retard. I should never have done that. But whatever. It's not. There was no excuse there. It's just like flying the day of is not the greatest idea, obviously. Um, I remember I was like, I weighed in. I was like 165 or six that day. I was so fucking lean and small. <laughs> That's how I felt too. Like I, I thought I was going to have trouble making 170 because I was like 175. And then the day of the tournament, I woke up, I was like 64, 65. I was like, what the fuck? Like, why did oh, I put in all that, all that all that hard work to, to make Yeah, weight? exactly. I mean, really for me, it was to. like... It just, it's almost like my body knows that a competition's coming up and I just shed a few pounds, like Dude, just naturally I, the last few days. Like it's weird. <laughs> I agree with that. Actually, like it feels like every time I have to make weight, I kind of like stress over it. And then the last day I just shed like five pounds out of nowhere. Uh, but I remember though that day I didn't have to make weight like uh, in the sense where I was really, really walking smaller after I had, I had gone to, um, I had traveled to Europe right before, and I don't know. I lost a bunch of weight, like, I, but in, like fat, you know. I was super lean, but since then, it's been a year almost, a bit less than a year. Now I, I got bigger. I started lifting heavier, eating more. But I remember back then I was like, oh, like too lean, man. Not good. Because I felt, I felt you were so fucking strong, Jordan, man. I was like, really? what the fuck is this? And then I was like, oh, he's from Iowa. That's why. Fucking farm boy strength, man. <laughs> Honestly, Blending though, I, trees. I, I grew up like carrying trees around and carrying hay bales and stupid stuff like that. And it's like, you know, people make jokes about it, but I think it actually does like factor in that like, weird kind of like grappling strength. Like, For sure. It's real, man. Like, like it's like going with, um, we have a guy at try. I started has been like doing judo, like you like in Canada, um, been doing judo for like 22 years now. And the, like when he grips you, you're just like, all right, like fuck that, you it's, know? It's or like brick layers. Blow, blow grips off. <laughs> <laughs> you ever you ever roll with a brick layer? Uh, not specifically, no. I I, I mean, I maybe at some point, but I didn't Man. know they were a brick layer. <laughs> you grab your ankles and you're like, what the fuck? Like you yeah. gotta go two on one and try to strip it. It's like impossible. <laughs> <laughs> so nice, it felt like that going with you i was like you know sometimes we'll, we'll make it run but sometimes i was on your back or something and and i was trying to just separate hands and i could fucking not do it i was like all right what what do i have to do man <laughs> <laughs> nice man well let's go ahead we'll jump right yeah, in yeah. It then i'll probably make this into a clip to upload later just me and you yeah, talking sure. about our match be cool Uh, we never rolled before that, right? So we no, didn't know I don't what think to so. expect. No, yeah. yeah, just just seeing each other compete. So, seeing the highlight tapes of each other, I guess we've seen yeah, the best yeah, exactly. of each other. I knew you liked Kimuras, obviously. Um, I was pretty sure you would be like comfortable in leg locks too, and you actually went for my leg at the beginning, like for an ankle lock. Yeah, there I tried to roll through for Kiss the Dragon, didn't quite get it. See, that's another time where I was like, I, I was aggressive, but at the same time, I felt sometimes like I would, yeah, I was definitely more aggressive than at Subspectrum. Yeah, that's, that's some nice exchanges, man. But say I let people put me in X Guard and shit, like, I shouldn't do that. Yeah, I, I even remember kind of like looking at you in this position and like your face was like broke my confidence a little bit because I was like, he, <laughs> he's not worried about shit that I'm doing to his leg right now. <laughs> Yeah, you were twerking pretty good, but hey, there's My something I need, I need to show you guys. It's like this foot, man. It cannot be broken. Holy Look shit, that's crazy. It's like already hyper, like what would look like hyperextended on most yeah, people's Yeah, exactly. Feet. So ankle locks are hard to hard to break on me. So that's why I was like pretty confident. Yeah, and I had a super low grip too. And I, I felt like if I was like to loosen it up to bring it higher, I might have lost it. So I just tried to keep going for it with the low yeah. grip and it 
kind of burnt me out a little bit. Or, I like, was about burnt, to ask you a bit of energy for sure. Yeah, I remember like uh, you went pretty hard on it. I was like, I I remember feeling like, oh, I I think it got him tired a bit. It definitely did. Were you like uh, a bit nervous, a bit stressed? Oh, that's rolling back take. That's my uh, my signature move. Yeah, that was nice. I think you hit that a couple times in this match. Yeah. I've um, used it to I've used it to teach my kids class before. Like, hey, you, yeah. This, yeah, all the time. I'm like, hey, this cool, here's a, here's a video of Coach Jordan getting his back taken, and uh, <laughs> this, is how you, try- this is how you guys should be doing it. <laughs> yeah, try it. <laughs> That's cool, man. No, but uh, that move, I remember uh, Taza. Taza was the the one that showed me that move first, and I started using it, and it made my. Um, oh, I switched to armbar right here, and you got out right away. Get that elbow down to the mat. That was a sick escape. Yeah, that's like it's, you? It's, you know, that's one of the places where I actually feel really comfortable is like in an armbar. Like I feel pretty safe that I'm not going to be good armbar, and I actually I feel like I have a lot of good entries out of like escaping an armbar. Uh, into the yeah. legs and some other stuff. You know what? I felt like you put me there like 12 times. In oh, rolling back take again. The uh, arm bar? Yeah, in the arm bar. I put, I put yeah, you there bar. like 12 times and like there was nothing <laughs> to do, man. Yeah, there was like three times throughout the match and then I think you went arm bar a couple times in overtime too. Or maybe got an arm bar off the back. So it was like I, I had to escape like four or five arm bars in this match. Yeah, you... Uh... You were tough, man. I remember, like, especially in the armbar position, I was like, how am I going to break his grip? It was so hard. Like, usually I, I, I do well with people, but you were calm, I remember, and you were like, you knew, like, like to wait and wait for your moment, you know? Yep. Yeah, I go there I go there all the time in training. I just let, our, like, white belts armbar me, and then I'll try to, like, smart, get, let, just let it keep going deeper and deeper and then trying to escape. That's that's just smart, actually. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And here, I remember in this moment, I was thinking about like the Jordan Holy or the like Andrew Alexander match. I was like, I'm not gonna get fucking triangle armbarred. So like, <laughs> so I went full defense. Like, even, yeah, even yeah, yeah. Appenzeller said something to me the week before. He's like, if you put your hands like this, it's gonna be really hard for him to separate him for like an armbar or a triangle. So I was like, all right, I'm going full defense here because I don't want to get caught with something that I knew was coming. <laughs> yeah, well, fair play, man. I remember like, uh, oh, that I go knees on throat. Yeah, then. Oh, oh force you to <laughs> to the side into a Kimura armbar position once again. Um, I remember when I was on mount with you, and I I often do like like Gordon showed me that. Uh, Nikki actually showed me that once where you go cross grip instead of same side cross grip. Mm-hmm. The guy defends you go on the other side, but with you even with the cross grip, I couldn't like move anything. So I was like, I need to use like my legs to separate your arms or something because mm-hmm. I'm not strong enough or I don't apply the technique good enough you know i went arm uh triangle there you were like fuck that <laughs> see how strong you are from this position who does that what the fuck <laughs> dude i was trying so hard to get you into that move actually right yeah holy shit and then you got out that was surprising man it's funny that we saw like the jordan holy um uh how I catch him and I try to catch you there and I can't. But it's like the exact same sequence. Mm-hmm. Almost identical. Mm-hmm. You know what? It's always the, the thing of creating a dilemma, right? It's like the double trouble. You're you're trying the guy has to give you his neck or his arm. So if he defends his neck, often the arm is loose and then you can go for it or the other way around. Uh doesn't work on guys like you that fucking plant trees man <laughs> you're right jiu-jitsu doesn't fucking work <laughs> armbar again what the fuck I thought, yeah i thought at one point you got on my legs maybe it's towards the end of the match yeah i think i did yeah one of the thing i'll, I'll tell you after is like see so you got out that was a nice escape with the the leg in um and I had some escape too with, uh, oh, that was cool exchange. Yeah, I think I get on your leg here. I go rolling That's under. Was, yeah. yeah. You're able to get my hips. Get the saddle, the yeah. yeah. Couldn't do shit again. Yeah, that's another place that I feel really con- or like really like uh, really safe or confident is like in in there when somebody even when somebody has my second leg like I've just been there so many times with guys that I consider to be pretty good leg lockers so 
And not yeah. that it's not that it's good to hang out there and that I can't get finished, but it's just a place where I feel like my defense is is pretty sure. I agree, man. It's I feel the same. Like you I, I'm me here. Like I shouldn't be fucking hands on the mat looking at you while you're playing no, with my legs. No, exactly. But, but for whatever nice reason, escape. yeah. Yeah, I remember they, like, almost tried to stop it. They, like, thought I tapped. I'm like, oh, uh, hell no. My knee's almost out. What are you doing? <laughs> no, exactly. You were, you didn't tap, I remember. Yeah. No, you were just, like, you were rolling. I tried to switch it to a knee bar, and uh, that's it. That's pretty much it. Uh, you know what? One of the things is, like, I remember, like, back then I was, like, not drilling. Like, one of the things I told myself after I was, like, I need to do more leg locks, you know, because I've done them so much. I was kind of bored at some point. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, these exchanges like that made me realize you need to do more fucking another knee on the head. Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about it, man. <laughs> yeah, I was telling myself I was like so you know, at this point too. It's like uh, people yeah. are like, "Oh, you're stalling." I'm like, "I'm not stalling." I mean, I am stalling, but I'm just fucking gas. Like, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And like, <laughs> listen, if you're position. if you're best, that's <laughs> funny, man. I try to like punch my my arms like to get like into your your turtle. Uh, yeah, I was just saying basically like like those exchanges. I feel like I would not I was better at leg lock back then, but I was doing them more. So that's something I need to do more. Like getting back to drilling again. It's not because you know leg lock that if you don't drill them, you won't be good at them. You know what I mean? So yeah. I, I was practicing a lot of back, a lot of passing. Like it was mostly this tournament was showing what I was practicing. It was like almost like more point scoring than than actual finishes you know what i mean yeah you got so, a lot of you got a lot of positions in this match i think i counted it at one point because i was kind of like i was like upset about like the because a lot of people were like oh you did really well and i'm like i got my fucking ass handed to me what are you talking about so like i, I went and scored the points i'm like i think i lost like 22 to 0 or something like that oh. 18 18 to 0 something like that <laughs> yeah i mean they don't they don't fucking matter in sub only but i know oh, what you yeah. mean like positionally yeah. You want to be like you want to be the one in, in in the better position. Exactly, dude. I was throwing every fucking thing at you, man. Front headlock, arm bars, back leg locks. Couldn't finish you. That's why I'm glad Do I got to remember? get this match because there, there were so many positions that like are in so many exchanges throughout the match that I felt like that's why I felt like I learned so much because. I got in there with somebody who I felt like was actually as good of a competitor than me or better. And that was nice. Cause in the Midwest, I just don't get that as much. Yeah. I think it's, it's like, even if you're like, I remember you told me or that you were pretty frustrated after that match, obviously like, like I was after the keep match or any match we lose. Right. But yeah. in like, when we go back, we always learn something and we can get something out of it. By the way, that's the fourth arm bar. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I didn't. I thought it was only like two or three in regulation, but yeah, four of them, and then <laughs> there's a couple in overtime. That's crazy. Yeah, I was I was getting I like a, a, so gassed. Yeah, and I was getting a bit frustrated in the sense where I'm like, I can't fucking finish this guy no matter what. I'm like, fuck. Alex Weaver says, "What was our biggest takeaway from this match, both of us?" Go ahead. Uh, my biggest takeaway was that I needed to link together the different parts of my game. Um, I, I have a lot of good areas, but they aren't necessarily uh, chained together in a really like comprehensive way. So um, after this match, that's something I started really looking into was like connecting all the different parts of my game so that I could link them together in competition because I felt like I got stuck in a lot of positions here and just kind of kept falling into the same rabbit holes. So uh, that's that was my biggest takeaway from this match. Nice. Um, I think for myself, the biggest takeaway was uh, I'm just going to repost uh, what we're seeing right now because I want my, my friends and the people to see it. Like, just share it. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Share now. Yeah, because I, I was like, I didn't see any. I'm like all over the place. Yeah, so my biggest takeaway uh, was that I remember telling myself, I was like, I need to fucking go back and work on my finishing mechanics because i was like even if i'm like not as strong as you jordan i was like i need to to figure out a way where it doesn't matter strength it shouldn't matter right it should be like my technique is good enough to get my finish because i got in so many spots to finish but i could not so i was like 
you got to drill my braking mechanics on everything like on not only braking not finishing exactly but like getting to my finish you know if you're on on the saddle like separating the legs and getting your heel hook or in the armbar position like having new way tighter way to like get the armbar um so that was my biggest takeaway and do you remember how fucking hot it was in this room man yeah that was i like i i turn red usually during matches anyways but during this one i turn like a fucking beat red it doesn't show as much in this camera lighting but like when i watch it on my uh my iphone the video that i have like my head is fucking purple yeah it was super hot in there oh dude I sweat so, so much bad. during that match <laughs> yeah you, you can just see it on the on the mats yeah and that's even like tatami finish mats like if they were smooth or like the slick like wrestling mats it would have been a fucking swamp oh yeah for sure man the it was it was insane and i remember that day i had like uh two triple overtime before my match with um packet yeah and with packet we had a uh one round of overtime or two i don't remember but man so exhausted by then you're just like EBI is rough for that. If you get into overtime, it's like fucking impossible, man. Another armbar. Who else did you uh, go to overtime with? I'm trying to remember. Um, what's his name? Uh, the guy Khalil from oh. uh, Detroit. Yeah, he's tough. I faced him before. Yeah, he's tough. It was my first time, but see, that's a match I, I would not cover because it's just boring as shit, mm -hmm. to be honest. There was like one good knee bar attempt from him, and then fucking nothing for the whole match oh you got out here yeah you did like that you did the right thing your shoulder was out yeah it was like it it looks weird that i'm like turning out like that but i was like i know my arm's safe i just have to keep pulling and there's not like a whole lot yeah. he can do to stay connected so yeah it was hard you did a bit like keep you know go over yep. turn your shoulder and then but your shoulder popped out so it was like good for you uh and you got an arm bar dude I had a shitty fucking arm, my left arm. It was like, and when you went on the left arm, I was like, oh, I remember that. I was like, this motherfucker, everybody takes the right arm. Why he takes the left? <laughs> yeah, that's that's my side right there. It's like my strong yeah. Kimura side. So I was side. like, I got to get out right away, man. Yeah, I remember I was like, he's out, but I'm going to still try to bend his arm over my fucking knee. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it's, uh, I remember I was like, not not scared but i was concerned about my elbow because i had it like completely exploded in february like maybe four oh, months shit. before that five mm -hmm. months so it was still recovering you know but but i was confident like you know and every time i train for ebi overtime i do the rounds uh, on both sides and after all my normal rounds just because i'm exhausted so i have to have like fresh people trying to break my arm and get out of there yeah uh, so i i remember i i did my own homework that like for that competition is just i was not down for you to go on my left arm <laughs> yeah that's my side so if we ever face each other again you'll know that i'm going for it i'm um yeah exactly now i'll know for sure <laughs> <laughs> um i'm i'm uh i'm gonna release a, an instructional with uh for us uh, on this on this channel um pretty soon but we're waiting until like the crisis like kind of settle and uh it's actually about armbar escape so i have that footage and i nice. and i break it down a bit like about like the escapes uh that i did on you like like getting the head out so we'll be able to uh see a bit of what's up cool nice i'll look forward to that yeah oh, shameless yeah, nice. plug that's what it's for man we'll throw it on the banner yeah for sure <laughs> for sure and yeah whenever you guys drop that we can bring you on again to plug it too so Oh yeah, for sure, man. Uh, it's always nice. I like what you're doing too. Like it's, it's pretty professional. Oh shit, that's it. Representing. It was a good tournament. It was a cool tournament, man. 